Hi, I'm Di with Sister Chicks Quilting and welcome to my channel today. I'm going to be making an Easter pillow because I truthfully I still have the Irish chain on my pillow and it's really time to replace it. But take a look at this beautiful fabric. This is by Sandy Gervais. Does this just not scream Easter or springtime? These colors, I mean, oh my gosh, they're so gorgeous. This is called Adele in Spring. And I'm going to use it as the background for a pillow. This is my background fabric that I've chosen. And it's, uh, it goes perfectly with this fabric. But guess what's going to go on it? You know, it wouldn't be Easter without one of these guys. Can you see my chocolate bunny? I actually drew this. I've made a template for it. And I'm going to have that uploaded on my website. The link will be below so you can download this giant chocolate Easter Bunny. And by the way, this fabric is called chocolate. And I'm super excited about this project. I'm going to teach you a couple of methods. I think we ought to get started now. Today I'm using the quilt as you go method like I used in the carrot table runner last week's video. You start by layering your batting on top of your backing. Now I'm using 80-20 batting and you can use spray based or not. And then you mark a center line like you see here. These are my jelly roll strips that I have cut down to one and a half inches wide by 23 inches long. I think they're just so cute. Then I've laid them out in the order that I'm going to sew them on the pillow background. Using a walking foot on your machine, start by laying out two strips right sides together, right next to the line you've marked on your batting. Sew through the strips at a quarter of an inch, completely through the batting and the backing. When you open them up, finger press as you go or use a seam roller and sew the next strip onto the last one you've sewn. Continue with this method until all the strips are sewn. Now, my line wasn't on the end where I and where I had my strips laid out in order. I bet you're wondering how I got it to come out right. Well, I counted down in one inch increments from the edge to the line, and that told me I should start at the yellow strips. Isn't this just so cute and springy and Eastery? I say it's stinking cute. I've used a white disappearing ink to trace my bunny design on the fabric. I'm going to sew directly on that line. First, I'm going to take a piece of interfacing. And I'm going to put it underneath the bunny, flip it over, and stitch directly on top of that bunny line. I'm going to place a couple of pins to hold the two pieces together, just to make it a little easier to sew. Go ahead and trim from your seam line about a quarter of an inch or a little wide all the way around the entire piece. Then when you're done trimming, you're going to want to clip. There's a lot of curves, so clip, 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 and make sure you clip up to the seam line, but not over the seam line. This will give you a nicer edge when you turn it. Now that he's all clipped, pull the interfacing away from the fabric and cut the interfacing very carefully without cutting the fabric. This is going to give you a hole to turn it. It's also a pretty long area to turn, so I'm going to cut the interfacing up into the ears. Begin turning the piece out and finger press along the seams as you go, being careful not to puncture the interfacing. 
after I finger press all the way around, I bring in the heavy hitter, my purple thing, and I use it to further push the seams out. When I do this, I'm making sure that it is on the side of the fabric, not on the side of the interfacing. And when I get it to where I like the look with all of the interfacing well underneath, then I take it to the pressing table and press it. I have Mr. Chocolate Bunny all pressed and placed on the background. Don't you think he's cute? Now turning the ears was a little bit fiddly. I think he turned out well. It just occurred to me, I thought I should tell you how I got this great shape on this dark fabric. It was with my 20 some dollar light box that I bought on Amazon. I love it. It's thin, easy to store, and it's pretty much a standard in doing appliques for me. Comes with the power supply. I recommend using one. When I applique, I use a clear or a smoke monofilament thread. I get it from Superior Threads. It works really well. In my bobbin, I always use my standard thread that I'm piecing with. And I piece with 40 weight R-fill thread. Now, the good thing about this thread is you can't see it. It's great. But the bad thing about this thread is you can't see it. And it's kind of a bear to thread your machine with. But I seem to get through it each time. I am back from the studio where I long arm quilted this. This design is also what I put on the bunny. I think it is just adorable. And I've got one end of the pillow, the envelope folded over. I have to do the other one, but this is a big ta-da, guys. Ta-da! Look at this bunny rabbit. Let me move the thread. Isn't that just the most nummy chocolate rabbit you've ever seen? And yes, I did the same design on the chocolate rabbit. I'm so in love with this. It is, what can I say, cuteness overload. So I've got the pillow cut to square. I've got my two backs over here ready to go. This is my scrappy binding. I'm ready to sew this thing together. Let's get started. I'm gonna start by finishing the second envelope. I sort of lightly press them and I sew this right on the edge. I fold it about oh a quarter of an inch or a little more and then I fold it over an inch and just sew it straight down on the edge. Assembly time, here we come. Okay, you folks are probably gonna laugh because there's no exact science to this. I've got my backings laid face, uh, face side down, and there is about seven inches. I found that on these pillows, seven inches is a good overlap. You can see my mistakes. I got a thread caught on my long arm. It's on the back side, inside of the pillow. I'm just gonna leave it. So I have the backs the way I want them. And then I'm going to lay the top the way I want it. And now you're going to see all of my mistakes. Notice that this is crooked. I, I don't know why, but I, I, I kind of did it crooked, I guess. But I'm not going to fuss about it because it's going to be a pillow and it'll be puffy. It'll be like a quilt. Nobody will even really see that. So what I'm going to do is trim the ends of the back because they're slightly bigger to fit my pillow top. And again, I'm doing this for a 22 inch pillow form. I am not going to put out exact directions because you want to do it to fit your pillow form. I'm going to use my Tula Pink unicorn pins. 
and the reason why I'm using those is because it's a heavier pen and it's strong. This is a bulky project. And before I bind it, I am going to sew around the entire pillow at a quarter of an inch all the way around, just on the edge to hold it together. So I want you to see my thought process on applying a scrappy binding that's different colors. For instance, I didn't want this green piece to be solely on the green. So I laid it out a couple of times and I, I started with the purple. And the purple is down right here. This purple looks good. I guess this is okay. This is the only spot I have any heartburn over, the pink on the pink. But coming up here, I've got the green, but I love the yellow across the top. And then coming down into the aqua on the sides and ending on the green. I think that's a good way to start the binding. So I'm actually going to start sewing about here. Let's get this thing bound. Oh, and by the way, I am I call it my binding foot. It's not really a binding foot. You see this little metal piece? I talk about it all the time. It's an edge piece and I sew my binding right next to it when I finish it and it makes it look so good on my quilt. I, I look like a professional. In fact, yesterday I had a friend look at one of my bindings and said, I could never sew like that. And I'm like, oh, you just need the right tools. Well, this I found is the right tool. Here I go. Now I'm just sewing the top binding down and I uh, have my machine set on the quarter inch side and it just goes perfect on here. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope you can. I am laying that edge of the fabric of the binding actually right next to the little bar in my foot. And it comes out perfect every time guys. Ta-da! I've got one more thing to add, then we're going to take you downstairs and I'm going to put the pillow in it. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. And do you even notice that the stripes might be crooked? I mean, I can't tell. Look how cute that scrappy binding is. You can see the purple and the green below. I think it's so much fun. And the little bow. I'll have to tack it down better. The little pink bow just makes it, don't you think? Again, you can find this template on my website, sisterchickscquilting.com. Now to show you the two finishes. By the way, I bound four quilts this week. Two were customer quilts. Thank goodness they're shipped out. They're probably thanking goodness too. <laughs> so I finished the binding on my double Irish chain and I did the dark binding. I think it looks just darling and it really sets these corner blocks off because there's a lot of white in them. This is a bold little print. It's for a little girl and it is going in the mail. Look at that adorable pattern that I have on there. It's called Precious. It's gonna be so much fun. I can't wait for her to receive it. Then I also got my scrap jar stars bound see my green binding oh let me hold it up this is my green binding i decided not to do scrappy you know i did four bindings i quilted quilts for customers and i made videos i was pretty pooped so i just did a straight green binding i'm very happy with it but i did do a scrappy heart patch on the bottom on the back side and that is where my label was sewn my Swap quilt is completely done and I think I am just going to take a nap and have a nice cuddle in this. Oh, you have no idea 
how comfy this is. Until then, you have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.